Hey everyone, thanks for checking out Ordinary American. Today we're going to talk about fire starting, whether it be for your bug out bag, or your get home bag, or just for camping. So let's get started. Okay, so in this uh, segment we're going to be talking about fire starting. Now, the name of the game before we even get started here, I want you to think about uh, just like any bag that you're going to take uh, for any type of uh, survival scenario, it's really nice if each item that you take can have two or more purposes. Okay, so as you're packing your bag to either go hiking, camping, or even for bugging out or bugging in or whatever the case may be, any of those types of situations, always consider every piece hopefully has two possibilities in which it can be used. So right off the bat, uh, where I keep my fire kit is inside of a stainless container that also is a cooking container. So <laughs> we're off to a good start. First off, the very first thing you're gonna see in my fire kit is a whole bunch of nasty old dryer lint, okay? Dryer lint is very flammable um, and it's really great for fire starting. Next thing we're gonna find in here is a whole bunch of Vaseline soaked cotton balls those will burn also. We'll talk about those a little bit. The next item in here is an Altoids tin sealed with no holes in it and inside of there is some char cloth. I'm going to do a separate video on how to make this char cloth and this is actually the container right here that you can use to make that char cloth. The way this works is you take a regular old tuna can when you're done eating the tuna, first off you want to make sure that the way you open it is by one of those side opening um, can openers, sort of, sort of the safety openers I guess they call them, because then it allows it almost to sort of seal back up. You poke a hole in the bottom and then there's a process in which you prepare that and uh, I'll put a link in this video for the other video so you can get there and see how to do that project. But this sits inside of this stainless cup. So that stores pretty well in the back. Next thing we have here are some waterproof matches. Nothing fancy. Haven't ever even used any of them. Got a nice pack of waterproof matches there. Got some other matches as well, non-waterproof. Uh, and you're going to see some duplication in here. This is packed kind of heavy. There's a whole bunch of uh, duplication of stuff in here. So obviously, if I were out backpacking, I would consider uh, the necessity of some of these items, and I would probably strip that down just a little bit for weight. Um, next, we have the Strike Force fire starter. It's a very nice piece of equipment. We'll be going over that shortly. We have another fire starter here in here for comparison. This is just your run-of-the-mill fire starter by Coleman. Uh, I believe I got this at Walmart. Very cheap entry-level fire starter. We have several of these little guys. These are wet fire. So this is essentially tinder in your pocket. Now the nice thing about this is inside of this strike force, there's actually one in there. It's stored nicely inside of there. So that's a bonus. Of course you want to have a lighter because that would be the best case is that you could just use your lighter. Some of these other primitive means or uh, means that are a little bit harder to do are in case this doesn't work. But the bottom line is if you can get a whole bunch of wood and just light it with a lighter then you're in good shape. That's great. And I also have some uh, camping candles in here. Uh, again just for you know whatever. This, this is packed pretty heavy like I said. This container right here is something that you could put your matches in. See, like that. You put your Strike Anywhere matches in there and it just provides a little bit of waterproofing. More wet fire and some more matches. So that's it. That's the fire kit. So let's start breaking it down piece by piece. Okay, so the first item that we have up here is the wet fire. So once you open it up, you're gonna find something that looks like this. This one, this one broke uh, as I opened it. But it's just going to be a little white brick like this. And if you smell this, you can, you can tell that this definitely has some type of lighter fluid or something is sort of impregnated into it. Okay, so you could potentially just light this whole piece, but if you want to be a little more conservative, you can actually just scrape some of this material off into your tinder, and we'll just do it all by itself here. 
So with that, this is going to be the first time that we actually are going to demonstrate the uh, strike force starter as well. Okay. So the first thing to remember is that when you're using these is to place this piece right by your work and then scrape backwards from there. Throw some spark right on there. And as you can see, that is readily ignitable. It's burning somewhat clean. A little dirty, but that doesn't matter. And if you look closely down there at the solid fuel, as it starts to break down through the combustion process, it's lasting fairly well. It's a very, very small piece that I put there. As you can see, it's a very small percentage of the overall brick, and it's burning pretty well. If you put that down into a tinder pile, it's going to do the trick for you. So again, this is the wet fire, fire starting tinder. Now something that's kind of nice sometimes is to chain one or two items together uh, to get a little longer lasting flame. What we're looking for here is not necessarily the most aggressive flame or that it's going to spark up really crazy, but rather just a nice hot flame that's going to be steady because that's going to allow us to preheat our tinder and then preheat the actual material that we're going to be using for say our campfire or our survival fire. So what we're going to try here is we're going to use some shavings from our wet fire that we know is very readily ignitable, takes off no problem. And then we're going to try setting one of our uh, Vaseline soaked cotton balls in the flame and see if we can get that to take on some flame. Now as you can see that Vaseline is starting to break down and off gas and actually starting to support combustion. Now if you notice here, it's absolutely beautiful how this is burning. The cotton ball is only barely starting to char and that's exactly what we want. We want just that nice steady flame and that's actually very clean. Very little carbon coming off of that fire. And so if you set your little tent of tindling, or your uh, kindling rather on top of that, that's going to take off very nicely. So again, to review, that's a combination of our wet fire that's very readily combustible and then transmitting that to our cotton ball. Now the cotton ball, it's not as readily combustible, so it's nice to chain those together. One thing you can do with the cotton balls when you impregnate them with the Vaseline, you can leave half of it dry uh, and use that to ignite and then that will transmit to where the Vaseline is and it'll slow the burning process down and make it more steady. Now I'm going to demonstrate for you a little bit the effect of char cloth. Char cloth is not necessarily going to take off in a rip roar and flame, but what it's going to do is it's usually going to produce a nice little ember for you that you can work with. So I'll try to show you up close here, just putting a flame to it like so. Let's we'll see if we can get it going here. There is an ember burning inside of that char cloth right now. Let's see if we can't get it going. Ooh, I don't want to blow it out of there. But it's getting pretty warm. So as you can see, it's a pretty modest flame, but there is a great deal of heat coming off of this. Okay, the last method that we're going to go over today is uh, dryer lint. And as you can see, I've got some nasty old dryer lint here with dog hair in there and everything. Doesn't have to be pretty. In fact, it's probably better if it's not. So let's throw a spark at this and see what happens. So that's just natural airflow right there. I'm not blowing any air onto that. You can see it's readily combustible, putting off a great deal of heat. 
We can compound that with one of our other methods. Throw one of our cotton balls on top maybe. Perfect, so now our small flame has communicated to our cotton ball, creating a larger flame and a more sustainable flame. So then we can build our fire up from there with our kindling.